Today, we're making the submissive text using geometry nodes. This is our node setup. We've got 12 nodes total because text in Blender not using geometry nodes is a pain. Start with the default scene. Delete the light bulb. We don't need it because we're gonna be making our own light. Highlight the default cube and then come to the modifier tab and hit add modifier. The first option should be geometry nodes. Select geometry nodes, which will give us this new menu and we'll click new. Once you hit new, nothing happens, but we can actually pop over into the geometry nodes tab that lives at the top of the screen and you'll see that we come to our geometry nodes workspace. The first thing we want to do is disconnect the group input node from the group output node. This will make our cube disappear from the viewport. We're going to start building our scene in the empty space between our group input node and run it into the group output. Now what we want to do to get our text going is click Shift A and then search for String to Curves. String to Curves is what's actually going to create our text. If we connect this to our group output node, click on string and we can type out whatever we want. For this video, I'm just typing the word text. You can see that our output is now showing the word text. If we look at the top line where the little F is and then to the right of it, there's a folder icon. Then click there and you can access all your fonts. For this, I'm going to select Barlow Condensed Italic by double clicking it so that it applies. The next node we want to add is Fill Curve. Now we can see that it's actually filled in the space in our text. The problem is our text is flat. In order to give it some depth, we'll hit Shift A again and look for the Extrude Mesh node. We can control the depth by coming down to the offset range and typing in a value that we want. I typed in 0.3. This is totally up to you. If we search for a new node via Shift A and look for the Mesh to Curve node, we can see that we're back to a wireframe version of our text, which is kind of cool. Now we've lost our geometry. To bring it back, we're actually going to look for the opposite node, which is the Curve to Mesh node. A little counterintuitive, I know, but trust the process. This isn't going to change anything right away, but it'll allow us to have this option for what's called a profile curve. The profile curve will let us sweep a custom shape across the text and help us achieve the neon light effect we're after. Hit Shift A again. We're going to look for a circle curve and run it into the profile curve of our curve to mesh node. It'll create a giant mess, but don't panic. The reason it looks this way is because the radius of our curve circle node is too big. We can drop that down to something like 0 0.005. So now when we're at 0 0.005, you can see that our text looks pretty cool, like the steel structures of a support beam. To back up a bit, one of the things I don't particularly want for this project is all of these little diagonal cross beams. In order to fix that, I can go back to the fill curve node and select end gons to get rid of them. Great, so back on my example that I showed, there were squares or cubes at the junction points where the bars meet up. It's not necessary, but it's a stylistic thing that I want to do. We'll need something called an instance on points node. To grab that, we'll use shift A and search. We're going to come back to that extrude mesh node and where this little green socket is that says mesh, we're going to grab that and draw it out to the points socket on the instance on points node. At this point, nothing will happen. We need to tell geometry nodes what type of geometry we want to instance on the points of our text. So since we want a cube, we can hit shift A and type cube and we'll get a cube node. Take the mesh and similarly to above and use the mesh socket from the cube and connect that to the instance socket on our instance on points node. I have nowhere to put this end section in the instance on points node. If I connect it to the end of the output socket, you can see we've got a mess here. What we actually need to do is use a join geometry node to connect our text to our instance on points mesh. The way we do that is shift A, search, join geometry. Then we want to place the node between our curve to mesh node and our group output node. Once we've made that connection, we can actually join in multiple pieces of geometry to this one node to unify them all in the end. Take the instances section of the instance on points and connect that into our join geometry node. We still have this giant mess. The reason for that is the cubes that we've instanced along our text are too big. We can go to this cube node right here and click and hold down to drag all the way down to the Z scale to highlight the X, Y, and Z parameters at the same time. And here we will type 0.03. Now our text is starting to look like our final render, but we are missing two nodes. First off, we can't control this text and it's transform. We can't scale it or rotate it. The way we gain access to this is by hitting Shift A and grabbing a transform geometry node and placing it between our join geometry and our group output geometry node. If we want, we can actually rotate this 90 degrees on the X axis. One final thing that we want to do is be able to set a special material for the pipes or tubes that make up the text itself. To do that, we'll hit Shift A and search for a set material node. Now, if we highlight our text geometry and then on the right hand menu, go to the material tab, we can use this default material and change the name of it to emission. Then we can go all the way down to the emission section and make the strength something like two. Choose a color that you want and nothing will happen. We need to get into a render view by selecting the fourth shading option at the top. Quick note here, I'm using cycles to render this. 
After turning on cycles, I come here to this world icon and change the color of the background to all black, but still, nothing has happened. The reason why is we've built the material for our text and we've created a node to reference the material back in our geometry nodes view. But we've got to click on the set materials node and then select this bottom window and that's where you can select your emission material. Now you should see the lights. To create this kind of cool textured background, we'll go back into our layout view and then hit shift A and search for a plane. Then we'll position that into place behind our text. You probably need to scale it up. At this point, it's up to you how you want to shade your background. For this one, I just added a quick noise texture and a color ramp set up to the roughness channel. Then I ran that into a bump node. And then I ran the bump node into the normal to create that bumpy, rocky sort of texture. The fun thing about this is when you set everything up, you can easily change the color and the intensity of your emission. You can also come back into the geometry node setup and change your text if you want to. Uh, you can also even change your font. If you guys want to see more ways that we can have fun with text and geometry nodes, let me know in the comments. See you next time.